In continuation with our previous module, we shall discuss here the secretory functions of the rest of the organs in the alimentary canal. We shall learn about gallbladder and pancreas which are the accessory glands and also deal with intestinal glands which are located inside the alimentary canal itself. Gallbladder It is a pure shaped sac attached by bile ducts to the back of the liver and on the right side of the abdomen. The gallbladder has a body and neck which is connected to a small tube called cystic duct. This duct is connected to the common hepatic duct coming from both the right and left liver and to the common bile duct connecting the pancreas and the duodenum. Bile is collected in the gallbladder between meals and empties into the bile duct through the cystic duct during meals. Whenever there is excess bile secreted by the liver which can't be used immediately for digestion, it passes along the bile ducts to the gallbladder where it is stored until further needed. The composition of gallbladder bile is 97% water, 0.7% bile salts, 0.2% bilirubin, 0.51% fats which includes cholesterol, fatty acid and lecithin and 200 milli equivalent per litre of inorganic salts. The pH of gallbladder bile is 6.8 to 7.65. The liver constantly secretes bile up to 1 litre in a 24 hour period but most of it is stored in the gallbladder. This hollow organ can only hold 30 to 60 ml of bile and is able to store large quantities of bile from the liver by concentrating it. The gallbladder is able to achieve this by resorption of water, sodium, chloride and other electrolytes through its lining. The other constituents of bile like the bile salts, cholesterol, lecithin and bilirubin stays in the gallbladder. It receives and stores bile from the liver via the hepatic and then cystic duct and can store about 50 to 100 ml in humans. It is attached to the visceral layer of the liver. The contractions expel bile into the common bile duct and the bile is then carried to the duodenum. The inner surface of the gallbladder is covered by the mucosa. The surface is made up of a columnar epithelium. The epithelial cells have microvilli and look like absorptive cells in the intestine. Underneath the epithelium is the lamina propria. The wall of the bladder does not have muscularis mucosae and submucosa. The muscularis externa contains bundles of smooth muscle cells, collagen and elastic fibers. Underneath this on the outside of the gallbladder is a thick layer of connective tissue which contains large blood vessels, nerves and a lymphatic network. Where this layer is attached to the liver, it is called adventia. The unattached region, there is an outer layer of mesothelium and loose connective tissue called the serosa. The presence of fatty foods in the stomach and duodenum stimulates the gallbladder to contract due to the action of cholecystokinin and pancreozymin secreted by the endocrine cells of the duodenal mucosa. The production of this enzyme is stimulated by the presence of fat in the proximal duodenum. The gallbladder then forces out bile and relaxes the sphincter of OD, thereby allowing bile to enter the duodenum. The other stimulus for gallbladder contraction is nerve impulses from the vagus nerve and enteric nervous system. If sufficiently stimulated for a prolonged period during presence of fatty foods, the gallbladder can empty its entire contents within an hour. The flow of bile is lowest during fasting and majority of that is diverted to the gallbladder for concentration. When chyme 
from an ingested meal enters the small intestine, the acid, partially digested fats and proteins stimulates secretion of cholecystokinin and secretin. The enteric hormones have important effects on exocrine pancreatic bile secretion and flow of bile. Cholecystokinin. Cholecysto means gallbladder and kinin means movement. The most potent stimulus for release of cholecystokinin is the presence of fat in the duodenum. Once released, it stimulates contractions of the gallbladder and common bile duct resulting in delivery of bile into the gut. Secretin. This hormone is secreted in response to acid in the duodenum. It stimulates biliary duct cells to secrete bicarbonate and water, which expands the volume of bile and increases its flow out into the intestine. Functions. The gallbladder facilitates storage of bile during the interdigestive period. The sphincter of OD is contracted, preventing bile from flowing out into the duodenum. As a consequence, pressure increases in the common bile duct and bile flows into the gallbladder. In the gallbladder, epithelial cells reabsorb water and electrolytes, causing the bile to become more concentrated. During the digestive period, intestinal phase signals stimulate the release of bile into the small intestine. Fatty acids in the lumen of the duodenum stimulate cholecystokinin, which stimulates contraction in the smooth muscles of the gallbladder and the relaxation of sphincter of OD, allowing bile release into the duodenum. The acidic chyme in the lumen of the duodenum stimulates other endocrine cells to release the hormone secretin that stimulates duct cells in the liver to release bicarbonate into the bile. The gallbladder secretes and adds mucus to bile. It absorbs water from bile, making it more concentrated. It contracts to empty bile into duodenum. Diseases of gallbladder. The diseases of gallbladder and bile ducts are commonly diet related. Some of them are the inflammation of the biliary duct called cholangitis. Disease of the biliary tea may cause pain in the upper right abdomen which might be investigated using ultrasound. The formation of gallstones in cystic duct called cholecystolithiasis and in the common bile duct called cholidocolithiasis. Gallstones can also cause inflammation of the gallbladder called cholecystitis. In the majority of cases, gallstones are precipitates of cholesterol. Gallstones form when the level of cholesterol in the bile exceeds the capacity of the phospholipids and bile salts to keep it in solution. This might occur in someone with hypercholesterolemia that is high circulating levels of LDL cholesterol or in an older person in whom bile salts synthetic enzymes have become less active. Gallstones can be completely asymptomatic. They become a problem when gallbladder contractions cause a stone to move into one of the bile ducts. This prevents the flow of bile into the small intestine, thereby decreasing the excretion of bile pigments leading to jaundice, as bilirubin accumulates in tissues. If the gallstone is lodged in the duodenal papilla, it will block the release of pancreatic secretions. Inappropriate activation of pancreatic zymogens within the pancreas leads to acute pancreatitis, tissue damage and inflammation in the pancreas. Gallstones are usually treated by surgical methods. Gallstones confined to gallbladder and cystic bile duct can be treated with removal of gallbladder called cholecystotectomy. Endoscopic surgical methods can be used to remove gallstones lodged in the common bile duct or duodenal papilla. In some patients, shock waves can be used to break up stones. Oral bile salts are also used to help solubilize cholesterol gallstones. This therapy works because oral bile salts are delivered to the bile ducts and gallbladder by enterohepatic circulation.
The pancreas is leaf-shaped second largest gland located in the loop of the duodenum. The pancreas is about 6 inches long, oblong and flat. The pancreas has an internal hormonal role that is endocrine and external digestive that is exocrine roles. The endocrine cells are the islets of Langerhans present in between the pancreatic SNR and produce insulin and glucagon hormones into the bloodstream. And these hormones in turn help control blood sugar levels. The bulk of the pancreas is composed of exocrine cells called SNE or lobules that produce enzymes to help with the digestion of food. The SNE are held together with connective tissue. It has two main ducts, the main pancreatic duct and the accessory pancreatic duct. These drain enzymes through the ampulla of Veta into the duodenum which joins the common bile duct located at the duodenum. The ducts of many SNI connect to form larger and larger ducts until the products of many SNI run into the large pancreatic duct. It delivers pancreatic juices of pH 8 to the duodenum through the pancreatic duct. It contains the proteolytic enzymes trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, carboxypeptidase, aminopeptidase, nucleases, amylase or amylopsin or diastase such as maltase, sucrase, lactase, lipase or steepsin, cholesterol esterases, phospholipases. Albumin, globulin and various inorganic constituents are also found in the digestive juice. Regulation of pancreatic secretion. The secretion from the exocrine pancreas is regulated by both neural and endocrine controls. During interdigestive periods, very little secretion takes place. But as chyme flows into the small intestine, the pancreatic secretion is strongly stimulated. The pancreas is innervated by the vagus nerve. The most important stimuli for pancreatic secretion comes from three hormones secreted by the enteric endocrine system. They are cholecystokinin, released by eye cells in duodenum and jejunum upon entry of food. As chyme floods into small intestine, cholecystokinin is released into blood and binds to receptor on pancreatic SNR cells, ordering them to secrete large quantities of digestive enzymes. Secretin. It is released by S cells of endocrinocytes located in the epithelium of duodenum. Secretin is secreted in response to chyme from stomach and primarily stimulates production of aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution by pancreatic ductal cells. Soon, the enzymes secreted by SNR cells are flushed out of the pancreas into the duodenum. Gastrin. This hormone is secreted in large amounts by the stomach in response to gastric distension and irritation. In addition to stimulating acid secretion by the parietal cells, gastrin stimulates pancreatic SNR cells to secrete digestive enzymes. Acetylcholine. It is released by vagal efferents which primarily stimulates synthesis of digestive enzymes by pancreatic SNR cells. As proteins and fats are digested and absorbed, the acid is neutralized and the stimuli for cholecystokinin and secretin secretion disappear and pancreatic secretion falls off. The pancreatic secretions are primarily regulated by these three factors which act synergistically to potentiate one other's effect. Phases of pancreatic secretion. The secretion of pancreatic fluid can be divided into three phases which corresponds to the different stages of food ingestion. Each phase tends to induce a slightly different composition of pancreatic secretion with slightly different regulatory mechanisms. Cephalic phase. This phase is initiated by the sensory experience of seeing and eating food and primarily involves vigorous nerve stimulation of SNR cells to produce digestive enzymes. Gastric phase. This phase is initiated by the presence of food within the stomach and primarily involves vigorous nerve stimulation of SNR cells to produce digestive enzymes. By the end of these two phases, 
the pancreatic ducts are filled with inactive digestive zymogens ready for washing out into the intestinal lumen by aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution. Intestinal phase. This phase is initiated by emptying of stomach contents into the small intestine and involves release of both secretin and cholecystokinin which stimulate pancreatic ductal cells to synthesize aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution that washes out all of the inactive pancreatic enzymes within the pancreatic ducts into the duodenum. The pancreas has an endocrine function and produces the hormone insulin and secretes it into the bloodstream in order to regulate the body's glucose or sugar level by causing the conversion of glucose to glycogen for storage in the liver and muscles. The hormone glucagon and stomatostatin are also released by the pancreatic endocrine cells to control the function of insulin and control the blood sugar level in the individual. The pancreas has an exocrine function and produces digestive juices and releases directly into the small intestine to further break down food after it has left the stomach. Pancreatic enzymes digest proteins, starch and triglyceride. The pancreatic secretions are also the major mechanism for neutralizing gastric acid in the small intestine. The hormone glucagon converts glycogen back to glucose. Diseases of pancreatic gland. Some diseases associated with the pancreas are pancreatitis, pancreatic cancer and diabetes. Pancreatic disease may be present with or without symptoms. One of the most common conditions of the exocrine pancreas is acute pancreatitis, which in the majority of cases relates to gallstones or due to acute or chronic alcohol abuse. In acute pancreatitis, a person may suffer from severe mid-abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. In severe cases, pancreatitis may lead to rapid blood loss and systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Other forms of pancreatitis include chronic and hereditary forms. Chronic pancreatitis may predispose to pancreatic cancer and is strongly linked to alcohol use. When the pancreas is unable to secrete digestive enzymes like during cancer of pancreatic duct, it results in jaundice. Other rarer diseases affecting the pancreas may include pancreatic pseudocysts, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency and pancreatic fistulas. Pancreatic disease might be investigated using abdominal x-rays, CT scans and through blood tests such as measurement of the amylase and lipase enzymes. The intestinal glands or crypts of Liberkin are glands found in the small intestinal epithelium lining of the small intestine namely the duodenum, jejunum and ileum and large intestine where they are sometimes called colonic crypts. The intestinal glands of the small intestine in the mucous membrane contain a base of replicating stem cells called panet cells of the innate immune system and goblet cells which produce mucus. In the colon, crypts do not have panet cells. The glands and intestinal villi are covered by epithelium which contains multiple types of cells such as enterocytes, goblet cells, enteroendocrine cells, panet cells, cup cells, tuft and stem cells. The enterocytes are present in large number, absorb water and electrolytes over the adjacent surface of villi and reabsorb water and electrolytes along with the end products of digestion. It supplies a watery vehicle for absorption of substances from chyme when it comes into contact with the villi. Epithelial cells in the crypts migrate out to become villi. The secretions of the intestine are known as succus entericus. About 1 to 2 liter of juice is produced in adult human in 24 hours. It is an alkaline colorless fluid of pH 6.3 to 9. 
The water content is 98.5% while the inorganic contents include 8% of chloride and bicarbonate ions. These contain digestive enzymes that digest specific foods while they are being absorbed through the epithelium. The enzymes include proteolytic enzymes such as aminopeptidase, tripeptidase and dipeptidase. Several amylolytic enzymes namely sucrase, maltase and lactase are present. The lipases include intestinal lipase and phospholipase along with nucleases namely polynucleotidase, phosphatase and nucleosidase. The basal portion of the crypt contains multipotent stem cells. During mitosis, one of the two daughter cells remain in the crypt as a stem cell while the other differentiates and migrates up the side of the crypt and eventually into the villus. Goblet cells secrete mucus, enteroendocrine cells secrete hormones while pennate cells secrete antimicrobial peptides at the base of the gland. The Brunner's gland is located in the wall of the proximal duodenum in the submucosa coat. It secretes large amounts of alkaline mucus which contains mucin and weak proteolytic enzymes. The various stimuli that help in stimulating the release of pancreatic secretions are tactile or irritating stimuli, vagal stimulations and GI hormones especially secreting. The enterocytes in the small intestinal mucosa contain digestive enzymes such as peptidase, sucrase, maltase, lactase and intestinal lipase that digest specific foods while they are being absorbed through the epithelium. The basal portion of the crypt contains multipotent stem cells which manufacture new goblet cells that are continuously worn away by the passing of food at this site. Loss of proliferation control in the crypts is thought to lead to colorectal cancer. Diseases of intestinal glands the small intestine may be affected by infectious, autoimmune and psychological states. Inflammation of the intestine is called enterocolitis, which may lead to diarrhea. Other causes of illness include intestinal pseudo-obstruction and necrotizing enterocolitis. Disease of the intestine may cause vomiting, constipation and blood in stool. Colonoscopy and stool examination may be used to examine the large intestine. Infectious disease may be treated with targeted antibiotics and inflammatory bowel disease with immunosuppression. Surgery may also be used to treat some causes of bowel obstruction. The elementary canal or the gastrointestinal tract is the continuous muscular digestive tube that passes through the body and functions to digest and absorb foodstuffs. The organs include the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine and large intestine. Accessory digestive organs aid the process of digestion and produce secretions that break down foodstuffs in the GI tract. The organs involved are the salivary glands, gastric glands, liver, gallbladder, pancreas and the intestinal glands. In this module, we have seen the secretory functions of gallbladder, pancreas and intestinal glands and their related disorders. Mm -hmm.